Hope you can live without it because you just might have to. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things the world is running low on. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at the important or widely consumed products and resources that are currently scarce or at risk of becoming so. We're only considering quantifiable, tangible goods, so you won't be seeing any abstract concepts like common sense, however true that might be. We're also excluding animals, unless they're a food source for humans. Hey, 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 no, 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 you got me wrong. I'm a dairy cow. No, 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 do best boy. Hey. Number 10, goat cheese. The texture of soft goat cheese makes it ideal for spreading on crackers or crumbling over pasta or salads. Don't panic, goat cheese is still widely available, but that could change. We've seen a global increase in goat dairy as people have moved away from cow milk for dietary and digestive reasons. But unfortunately, this ill-timed trend took off in tandem with a fall in the production of goat milk after a massive amount of goats and sheep were hit with disease in 2010. This meant that many farmers left the industry for financial reasons. Hopefully, the increased demand will bring producers back, but we should all be prepared to pay a little bit more for our goat cheese. Or bid adieu to this lovely wine pairing. Number 9. Tequila Unfortunately, that lovely Mexican beverage responsible for so many great nights and absolutely terrible mornings is at risk too. Once again, it comes back to the farmers, finance, and disease. Tequila is made from the blue agave plant, which requires about 12 years of growth before it can yield the goods to produce tequila. That's a long time to wait, especially when farmers could be using their land for a more lucrative cash crop, corn. Farmers are doing just that to make up for the one-fifth of plants destroyed by disease in 2007. And although there may still be plenty of tequila to go around right now, you may want to stock up. Tequila is my lady! My lady! Come on in, guys. Come on in, come on in. You're welcome. Number 8. Sardines Not every sardine is, is meant to swim, son. I don't understand fishing metaphors! For fans of this salty little fish, either on pizza or in a Caesar salad, you might be in trouble. We were famous for sardines until the day the Baby Brent sardine cannery closed for good. While the tequila and goat cheese industries can easily recover, the sardine situation might be sunk. As with many other types of fish, overfishing is a major factor. But with sardines, giving them a break to repopulate isn't cutting it. The population has continued to plummet despite the imposition of some limits, which has led many to suspect environmental factors. I tell you what, you want more sardines? I, I can get you more sardines. Number seven, bacon. Give me all the bacon and eggs you have. You've likely felt the effects of this particular pork deficiency, as supermarket bacon prices have skyrocketed in the 2010s. In 2012, Britain's National Pig Association called a global shortage unavoidable. And we've been living it ever since. Pigs raised within the industrial farming system are highly susceptible to illness, most notably the horrific-sounding porcine epidemic diarrhea virus, which resulted in the culling of 8 million pigs since 2014. Poor harvests and drought in other pig-raising areas of the world only made it worse. Thankfully, according to the USDA, 2016 was a record comeback year for the U.S. pork industry. But China, another major producer, is now facing shortages. <laughs> Number 6. Coffee There you go. That's $37. Wow, awesome! Forget all those dystopian movies. It's not going to be zombies, nuclear fallout, or evil megacorporations that usher in the apocalypse. It'll be a lack of coffee. In all seriousness, the global problem is we're just drinking too many cups of joe, and we've become connoisseurs. Without it, we wouldn't be surprised if about 50% of people would just give up and die, effectively bringing the wheels of civilization to a grinding halt. Many of the largest coffee-producing countries have been experiencing terrible droughts and infected crops in the 2010s. With climate change, it's been estimated that half of all potential coffee-growing land will become unusable by 2050. Listen to me very carefully, because I'm only going to say this once. Coffee. Black. Considering humanity consumes roughly 2.25 billion cups of coffee each day, we're in for one hell of a collective caffeine withdrawal headache. 
Number 5. Honey. For thousands of years, we've been living off the labor of bees, depending on them to produce that sweet, sticky stuff for free. All they asked for in return was a suitable habitat, pollen to collect, and enough honey to survive. Bees, honey, no more honey. And we blew it. A lack of crop diversity, climate change, pesticide use, no one's sure what the exact cause is. But in the United States, bees are dropping like flies. And if it continues, the ripple effect will be devastating. Bees pollinate over 100 different crops, including almonds, apples, and more. Without bees, these crops fail. Many won't realize just how much bees did for them until they're gone. Number four, helium. A simple fact is that helium is six times less dense than air, which means sound waves travel through it much faster. High-pitched voices aside, this is no laughing matter. The average consumer probably thinks of helium as a novelty gas that lifts spirits and balloons at parties. But it serves a crucial role in industries like welding, rocketry, manufacturing, and medicine. Currently, the U.S. supplies 75% of the world's helium half of which comes from the U.S. Federal Helium Reserve in Amarillo, Texas. But the government-mandated lifespan of this reserve is nearly over, and sure enough, the reservoirs almost depleted. It was always assumed that private companies would pick up the slack, but nowhere near enough plants have opened to make up the difference. What's more, the helium we'll have to get from the air will be thousands of times more expensive. Number three, cocoa. A chaka river. That's the most fantastic thing I've ever seen. In a world of diverse culinary tastes, chocolate seems to be a universal hit, and the global demand keeps growing. Weather conditions and disease have hurt production, and much of the world's supply is produced by subsistence farmers using the same techniques they've been using for generations. And they cannot keep up. While much of the world adores chocolate, most cocoa farmers don't feel the love. It's hard work with little reward. According to the Cocoa Barometer, cocoa farmers in Ghana make roughly 84 cents a day, which has younger generations in farming families looking for better opportunities in other fields, meaning chocolate prices will likely go up quite a bit. Let's have some nice hot, unsanitary chocolate! Number two, oil or petroleum. There's oil under this studio. <sighs> nah, I can smell it. Yeah, yeah, we know. Everyone's been talking about peak oil or running out of fossil fuels for decades. But every time you go to the pump, there's enough to fill up your car. So what's the problem? Petroleum is a non-renewable resource. We can't just crush up plant and animal matter, cook it on high for 30 minutes and say crisis averted. Oil takes hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years to form. No one can agree on when exactly we'll run out. But according to many scientists, we are already seeing signs of depletion. The U.S. is currently importing 60% of its oil. What happens when everyone starts running low? Time to start investing in solar? Your next family car has arrived. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Dive around in it like a porpoise. Number one, fresh water. Do not, my friends, become addicted to water. Let's be honest. If we run out of this life-giving liquid, the availability of everything else on this list becomes moot. We're dead. And while many people in the Western world think of water as free and unlimited, it's that sort of thinking that has the world driving full speed at a brick wall called extinction. Only 2.6 to 4% of the water on Earth is fresh. It's clean. It's cold. And that's what I call high quality a tool. The UN has already reported water shortages on every continent and is predicting that by 2025, 1.8 billion humans will be living in areas with water scarcity issues. Experts are urging people to start using water responsibly. Our very survival may depend on it. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.